The Nissan 370Z was a legendary car, and to find out how Nissan designed its aerodynamics, we did this simulation at 72 kbh, which is about the speed when the drag of a car becomes the dominant resistive force. Also, this is the high performance package, the Nismo package, which among other devices features a larger rear wing. We'll cover later in the video how it impacted the 370Z's performance. Let's first get a general overview of its aerodynamics and then dive into the details. These streamlines show the overall flow around the car. They colored in the velocity from 0 meters per second in blue to 27 meters per second in red, and its overall aerodynamics is good. All the main areas are performing well. For example, under the car, the flow is well behaved, and the diffuser is shooting the flow up nicely, which helps reduce the wake size and the drag. And it's also increasing the downforce over the rear wheels, which is important because this is a rear wheel drive car. So the added downforce increases the traction the rear wheels have. So the car can accelerate faster. The flow over the rear window is good too, because this is a region that some cars have trouble with. Sometimes the flow separates and a large wake forms. Here though, the flow is very well behaved and that means less overall drag. Also, generally, because the flow is well behaved, it feeds the wing with streamlined flow. That's especially important here because the rear wing is mounted very low, so the flow it's seeing is very much from the upstream part of the car. So anything that affects the flow upstream will then hit the wing and likely reduce its effectiveness. One important point to note here is how the streamlines travel over the side of the car. You can see here how the streamlines travel over the side nicely, and then all of a sudden it just jerks up and slows to around 10 meters per second. What's happening here is that the flow is hitting the rear wheel arch and then it has to redirect. That comes with lost energy. The reason why this feature is important is because it really helps us understand why so many modern sports cars and supercars have some form of air intake right here. By putting an air intake here, whether that's to feed the engine with air or some kind of cooling flow, you're taking this already slow flow and using it for a function that doesn't require good streamlined flow anyway. As such, it's a really smart way of using this bad flow so that first of all, you take that bad flow out of circulation so that it doesn't negatively impact more areas downstream. And second, you don't take other good flow that you could use elsewhere. This approach works well for the cars like the 370Z, which has very flared rear wheel arches. Another car that would suit it well is the Bentley Continental GT. And actually from this angle, the nose looks very much like the Subaru BRZ. And speaking of the nose, let's look at it in more detail. This plane is slicing right down the center line of the car. It's colored in the same way as the streamlines. The floor at the front really suffers from the license plate. It's increasing its blunt frontal area of the car, and there's even a wake behind it. The good news is that of all the locations you could put the license plate, this is one of the best because you're going to have to decelerate the flow anyway as it goes into the radiator. All this license plate does is block the radiator a little, so the radiator has to be bigger to get enough flow in. Now I'm actually really impressed with the front hood because it's so curved, but still we don't get that higher pressure here. What I mean is that if you look at the direction of the free stream flow, the front of the hood is at like 50 degrees to it. So you have all this air just slamming into it that would then increase the drag dramatically as you have all this energy pushing the car back. But the pressure here isn't actually that high and even lower than the high pressure we get just a little down from here. This is actually a very clever blending of the nose into the front. So if we look at the angle of the flow at the grill, look at how angled up it is. So even though the free stream flow is so straight, the local flow here is much more vertical. As such, having a nose this rounded actually meets the flow at a very small angle. In other words, the front of the hood is almost in line with the local flow. And so we don't get as much air slamming into the front and increasing the pressure here. That's pretty clever. Moving along the hood, the pressure drops and that's because the flow accelerates, but it's about the same as you would get with most other cars, despite having such a rounded nose. This simulation was done with open foam, and if you want to learn open foam, then check out our courses here. Let's now look at underneath the front because this part is always dodgy on cars, and unfortunately, it's also dodgy here. You can see how sharp the lip is and we're getting flow separation here. That comes with good low pressure and hence downforce, but if we look at the drag orbit, you can see just how much drag is produced. 
In fact, this is quite a lot worse than most other cars. And the reason why I think it is so much worse is, well, obviously there's more, but also Nissan made the Nismo package very aggressive. And so the front is very sharp underneath. Coupling that with a very vertical flow over the grille, that's just a recipe for bad flow as you have flow at a very sharp angle, trying to flow over a sharp edge. That's just not going to work. One thing that isn't great about the 370Z from an aerodynamics point of view is how sharp the angle between the windshield and the roof is. That isn't so bad for the drag because the flow stays attached over it. So it isn't really directly increasing the drag, but you can see just how much redder it becomes. The flow really accelerates and that makes the pressure drop like crazy. In fact, this region gives the lowest pressure seen around the car anywhere. That's not great for downforce because that low pressure here is producing a lot of lift. Fortunately, it's occurring around the middle of the car. So it's equally affecting the front and rear wheels. But I said that the low pressure here doesn't directly increase the drag of the car. It does indirectly though. For example, if we look at the rear window, you can see just how thick the boundary layer is forming over it. That's partly because as you go down the rear window, the pressure increases. That higher pressure is pushing back on the flow and decelerating it. And while we will still get this effect with a smoother roof, it's worse here because of just how much lower the pressure gets to begin with. As a result, the adverse pressure gradient, so the rate at which the pressure increases as you go down the rear window, is greater. So the boundary layer is thicker than it would be for a smoother roof. That thicker boundary layer then flows right into the rear wing, and that reduces how effective it is. But funnily enough, this rear wing is pretty bad anyway, so the bad flow hitting it isn't that big a deal. If you had a good rear wing, then that very thick boundary layer would be more of a problem, but still, it does reduce how effective and efficient this rear wing is. Now I said that the rear wing is pretty bad, let's go through it and see why. So without even seeing the flow around it, you can already tell that it's not going to be great. That's because the trailing edge just pops up. This trailing edge is actually very similar to a wing flap you get on an airplane. Wing flaps are used to dramatically increase the lift produced by the wings, but that comes with much more drag. That's why they're only really used when you need high lift and not during cruise. A wings configuration during cruise is far more efficient than during takeoff or landing, which is when you have flaps down anyway. The rear wing is actually producing really good downforce. Some ways of telling that is one, the flow is kicked up quite a lot behind it, and two, there is much higher pressure on top of it than underneath. However, this drag orbit shows that it's producing quite a lot of drag. Now this light blue region might not seem like much, especially considering just how much more is coming off the rear of the car, but for a wing, this is a lot of drag. Ideally, there would be almost nothing. You shouldn't be able to see really anything. What we're seeing here is largely pressure drag. What that means is that the wing is creating a large wake and that wake is low pressure. So upstream, we have higher pressure and downstream, we have low pressure. As a result, there is a net force backwards. The major reason why we're getting so much drag here is because of just how sharply the trailing edge pops up. If you blended the trailing edge into the rest of the wing more, you'd be able to get almost as much lift, but with much less drag. So the wing would become way more efficient. I'm pretty sure the engineers knew that when designing the wing, but the styling department overrode the wing's design to produce something more angled to go with the rest of the flow. We also plotted these streamlines to see just where the flow goes around the wing. And interestingly, and somewhat unexpectedly, is how slow the flow is just after it. You can see that it's very green. The reason why that's interesting is that the underside of the wing forms this kind of venturi effect with the top of the trunk. So the flow being shoved through the opening should accelerate. And we do get that a little bit, but as soon as the wing ends, it slows down dramatically. You can also see just how much the flow gets pulled down into the wake, which is kind of good in that it reduces the wake size a little and hence the drag, but it also reduces how much downforce you get from the wing. We also have another cut plane 50 centimeters to the left of that center one. And in this one, the wing is performing even worse. I'm convinced that it's largely because it's just too low. It's completely in the boundary layer and that's causing a lot of problems for the wing. It really needs to be mounted up another 20 centimeters or so. Now you might have noticed here that there's a huge wake behind the wing. That's not just because of the wing, but also because of the entire wing structure we see here. It's actually a wing with a spoiler integrated into it. You can see here the lip at the back, then on top of that, a wing is bolted on. That's done for more downforce, 
but because there isn't any gap for the flow to go underneath the rear spoiler, a large wake forms. And actually, this setup is even more of a reason to raise the rear wing. You have this high pressure over the rear spoiler, very close to the underneath of the rear wing, so that is going to cancel out some of the downforce from the rear spoiler and then some of the downforce from the rear wing. So I think moving the rear wing up would help in multiple ways. Looking at this plane, which is just behind the rear wing and slicing through horizontally, the wing supports are okay, but not great. This can curve the outside of them, which is usually a good idea, but the inside should have also been curved because here you can see how the flow is angled outwards and not inwards. So the flow really wants to follow the surface outwards and so the inside surfaces should be angled to do that. As it stands, the outside curvature is producing some wakes. I just want to go back to the center plane again because in it, you can see just how good the diffuser is. Looking at how well it shoots the flow up, it's not a very aggressive diffuser, but it works way better than really anything I've seen short of a supercar. Nissan achieved that by rounding the edges of the diffuser quite a lot. So it's a little trick, but a highly effective one. That alone would cut down a lot of the drag, maybe 50 counts or even more. And if we look at this plane 50 centimeters to the left, the diffuser isn't working as well anymore, but that's partly because of the exhaust pipe now creating a sharp edge, but also because the rear wheel is producing a large wake that then feeds into the diffuser. You can't expect the diffuser to work well with a bad flow like that. And if we look at the drag produced, all of that is reflected here where in the center of the diffuser, there is almost no drag, and only once we get to the edges do we get quite a bit. So overall, the diffuser is fantastic and probably the best part of this car. If we look from above, this plane is a Z plane slicing 40 centimeters off the ground, and a standout feature here is just how small the wake is. I mean, let's remember that this height is still around the rear wheels, and we should be getting large wakes from them, but the wake here is still tiny. The 370Z does that through heavily curving the rear edges which helps keep the flow attached, but also the rear vents feeding some of the air from the wheel houses into the wake. This was actually one of the earliest cars to use this idea, and it works well. And looking at the pressure, if we zoom in to just ahead of the rear wheel arches, remember how this rear region is where more modern cars place air intakes. We can see here how high the pressure is just from the flow crashing into the surface. And so by putting air intakes here, you take the high pressure that forms here usually and reduce it and then reduce how much drag is arising from it. In this plane, which slices through the wheel arches, we can see just how much they protrude into the flow, and that comes with large wakes. They also create a lot of drag. So they really need to be shrunk, or at the very least, rounded and blended into the body more. Poking them out is not that great for aerodynamics. In this plane, which is about one meter off the ground, we can see how large the wakes are from the side mirrors, and that comes with a lot of drag too. So with all these pros and cons, what did the drag coefficient come out to be? It came in at 0.32, which is pretty good by modern standards, and it managed to achieve a drag coefficient that low while still producing a bit of downforce, 1.5 kilos of it. So the 370Z overall is a very aerodynamic car, particularly for its time. Peace out amigos.